Um, talking in general about, we need some, we need some grid lines here. Come on, there we go. Um, talking in general about uh, slope and linear functions. If you if you have a function that is, I don't know, like this. Let's say we have something. It's a what is it? Some kind of a tank or a container or something. Some kind of a container here. And it is slowly getting filled up with something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Water. Or, I'll make it something uh, something liquid like water. And we're gonna we're gonna say that we're gonna measure how many liters of water are in that tank over time. Let's actually draw the water here. How about that? Here's the here's the water. Here's the water that's there now, okay? I can't guarantee that this is going to work, but it might. So the water is going like this, okay? Here's the water. In, oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> it all comes apart here. It worked up till there. Anyways, try another way. Because I'm sure it's important to have it uh, have the visual effect there, isn't it? Very, Very important. Uh, I'll try this. Here's water. That doesn't look nearly as exciting or effective, but okay. So the water is going up slowly over time. If we're going to draw a graph of that, let's say it starts about there. Let's say that this is uh, going to be measured. Let's say this is 10 liters here. This is 20. This is 30. And let's say we're measuring it over a series of minutes here. Let's say this is 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. For now, I'm going to keep the scale the same on both of them, but you have to look at the scale to see what they mean. So let's say it starts at, this is five, five liters in here to start with. So if I had a graph of that, I'd have a point right here at the beginning, because at zero, at the start, we have five liters. What's that point called where a line crosses the y-axis? The y-intercept. The y-intercept is going to be, we don't have a line yet, so it's not really a y-intercept yet, but the y-intercept is going to be the starting value for a function, any kind of function, not just a linear function. In this case, it's 5 liters, right? 5 liters is the y-intercept. That's the starting value. Let's say that it goes up from there. So we're, we're going to draw it so that we can, let's pick a nice, how about, how about that? Okay, so it's going up like that. The other thing we can measure um, about this is we can calculate the how fast it's changing here. Which way is this changing? Is it filling up or is it decreasing? What's happening with the amount in here? According to that graph, what's happening? It's filling up, right? It's going up here. The level's going up. If the level were going down, what would that graph look like? Yeah, it'd be going down, right? I think hopefully from grade 10 you have a sense of lines that go up have a positive slope, something's increasing. Lines that have a negative slope going down, something's decreasing. As time goes by here, now we're going to look at slope. Slope is a measure of how the line is changing. Actually, what I am going to show you is this. Um, no, we're going to... We're going to try again here somewhere. Okay, it's under this. Um, let's look between two points. Okay, so let's say we have two points. Let's have one at the beginning and one over here, something like that. Slope is a measure of how far, how the line is changing. If the line is going up, it's going to have a positive slope. If the line's going down to the right, it's going to have a negative slope. Slope's a measure of how how fast the vertical is changing compared to the horizontal. If you talk about the slope of anything, that's often how they give it. They compare the vertical change to the horizontal change. So for that line, the vertical change and the horizontal change are equal, right? For every three across, it goes three down. Or if you had it up here, for every three across, it goes three up. That ratio is one to one, right? There's three and three here. Three over, three up. Or if it was two over, two up, one over and one up. The slope for that is going to be one, saying that the ratio of those things is one. If we changed it now where 
it went up 2 for every 1 over, or it went up 4 for every 2 over, that ratio is 4 to 2 is 2. The slope of that is 2. The slope's a measure of how the, how the what you might have called the rise and the run compare. If it goes up 2 for every 4 across, the slope's only 0.5. The slope you get by dividing the vertical change divided by the horizontal change. So 2 divided by 4 gives you 0 0.5. If we made it 1 divided by 0.4, it's hard to see in there, it's right there. The slope is 0 0.25, 1 divided by 4. If we uh, stretched it out this way, 1 divided by 5, 1 divided by 8, right, it, it does that. If I put it right on the line here, the slope is 0 because now what's the vertical change there? Nothing, right? It's not going up at, at all. And then if you actually make it go down here, the slope is negative. This should actually be negative. This little triangle here, mathematicians like symbols. They use this little triangle to uh, to mean change. So this, it's actually a Greek letter, delta. This represents the change in the y values, the vertical. And this represents the change in the x values, the horizontal change. <coughs> 